Perfectly. Thank you. <laughs> so, Kevin. first of all, thanks a lot for inviting me for this webinar. Uh, it's uh, very interesting to talk about uh, how we see Green Lab as a living lab. Um, my name is Ebbe Kruse Vestervor. I'm the research director in Green Lab. Um, and uh, just briefly before getting started, Green Lab is in Denmark. Uh, it's in Jutland, uh, um, a little bit north of a small town called Skive, so middle part of Jutland. And uh, the first slide actually shows uh, an aerial view of what it is. So um, <clears throat> compared to the uh, previous uh, uh, talk by Jovan, uh, you can see that we now take a different zoom level. We are not at farm level anymore. When we're talking about living lab and green lab, it's um, a, an industrial living lab, but it's still um, connected to agricultural industry. Uh, you can see on the aerial photo that it's a, a rural land we are on. You see farmland everywhere around the cluster uh, and a li little bit of water as well. Um, so I will take you through um, a bit about what we're doing uh, and how we're working with researchers uh, on the living lab scale for for this uh, for this site. So uh, Green Lab is an industry park. We call it Industry and Energy Park. Uh, so um, uh, as a company, uh, we in Green Lab are hosts of doing industrial development on this site. Uh, it's a physical platform. You, you can say we, we have three main pillars of what we're doing. So if we take the left part first, uh, it's, it's a physical platform with the industrial companies, factories, um, working in the sweet spot between the agricultural sector and the energy sector. So our focus is not uh, completely on, on the same things as, as the, in the previous talks out at the farms themselves, but it, it's on, um, the, the part of agriculture where it becomes uh, industrial and factory oriented, and especially focusing on the, the link towards energy. So uh, everything about uh, green fuels connected to agriculture. Uh, for this reason, uh, one of the special things about our uh, industrial cluster is that we have um, our own supply of green energy. We are right now erecting a um, total of 80 megawatt of uh, wind turbines and solar energy which is connected to the park and delivers power to, to the individual factories. Then we're working a lot with the sector coupling. Um, I mentioned the sweet spot between agriculture and, uh, and the energy sector. Um, our focus there is um, uh, to, to look at energy in all its forms. Uh, so not just electricity coming in, but, but also looking at where do we have the various energy streams um, how can we make use of um, of the other streams, like for example, heat or or biomass of uh, various forms in the park? So uh, we call that our symbiosis net because we have a vision of uh, zero waste among the industries co-located in the park. Um, so one of our roles in Green Lab is to have dialogue with the individual companies. Uh, and understand what are the needed input streams and what are the output streams of each factory and how can we connect those uh, among the industries. Then the second uh, part of, uh, of our role, the middle part of the slide here, is that we uh, try to be the perfect host for new companies uh, with new technologies, new solutions to, to the shift in um, towards sustainability in the agricultural and energy sector. Uh, we are not um, we're not working with the, with new solutions uh, at the lab scale. Uh, we are we're taking the companies in when they are ready to build their first factory. So when you have a proven solution um, in prototype scale up, and you're ready to do a first experimentation with that factory being first of its kind. I'll give a few examples of of that when I go through what we have in the park. And then finally, the, the right part of the slide here is uh, what I'm hitting in Green Lab. That is um, putting on a research platform on top of all of it. That's where uh, all of this becomes a living lab. Uh, so I think that's the, the justification of uh, having me being part of the webinar. 
So we work together with the researchers, they both nationally and internationally, to study what we're doing with the co-located industries and to come, come up with the suggestions of other ways of working, new solutions, new technologies, but also uh, using our living lab as a study object in itself. I'll come back to that when I give some examples of our projects uh, with researchers. So in Green Lab, our uh, main focus and vision is about a power shift in industry. Uh, we are trying to be the drivers of the green transition, working with sustainability, uh, but working with it in a way where we also um, acknowledge that this is some, not something individual companies can easily do by themselves. Um, a lot of uh, the green transition, uh, especially when it comes to the linkage between agriculture and energy, um, is uh, a transition that has many involved stakeholders. Um, it's also a transition uh, where you will have uh, value chain with very tight margins. Um, so just to give an example, if you want to make green fuels based on electrons from renewable energy uh, that should be turned through electrolysis into hydrogen, uh, coupled with some carbon sources from agriculture to turn out to be green fuels like, for example, methanol. The margins, uh, your, your ability to make profit on such a value chain is at least for years to come uh, very difficult. And you will have multiple stakeholders involved. So um, the risk of such a transition is that you, you will have many stakeholders making sub-optimization or self-optimization uh, and uh, nothing will happen on the power shift. So our role as hosts of, uh, of a cluster uh, working with the, the green, green transition is the, to do what we call value mediary role. So we work with the, not, not just the one company um, at the time, but, but take in multiple stakeholders and try to do optimization as a cluster uh, or as a whole value chain. That's in essence what we are uh, doing in Green Lab and then opening it up as a, a living lab that the researchers can engage with. A bit about the history of how we were uh, founded. The idea goes back many years, back in 2008, uh, Skive, the municipal where we are located in Denmark, was appointed as one of the Danish energy cities um, that was uh, supported by one of, one of the Horizon 2020 programs uh, from EU. Um, and uh, a number of concepts was worked with at that time uh, during the next coming years, especially the period from uh, 2014, a master plan of uh, industrial development in the municipal was uh, was uh, started and developed, uh, and and that it became into green lab. So uh, the main reason of showing you this slide is uh, also that the, the the webinar is about the challenges and obstacles of doing living labs. And it has been a long journey for, for a living lab like Green Lab to come to where we are right now. You can see there has been a number of years for preparation uh, in the municipal uh, until 2019, where we were capitalized as a company, uh, which is now a, a public-private partnership. It's partly owned by the municipal. It's partly owned by a local foundation, the Spa Best uh, Fund. Uh, and uh, partly by an uh, energy company, uh, Nordic. Um, so with that, that's the timeline of how we uh, became a company who are hosting um, industrial clusters uh, and working as a living lab with researchers. The location of uh, this living lab um, is uh, at a good sweet spot because uh, the location is a bit north. You could see on the picture before that it's uh, out in the green field uh, among agriculture. But besides being close to agriculture, it's also very close to the national grid, both of electricity and uh, natural gas. Um, so uh, there are some unique opportunities in this area of uh, doing the sector couplings, both taking in sources from the agriculture, taking in uh, uh, electricity uh, from uh, 
from the high voltage lines of uh, the national grid and uh, either uh, taking gas or delivering gas to the to the national grid uh, in in the area this is the an animated slide uh, which shows you both what we have in the park right now and uh, what is uh, currently being built the yellow ones are the ones that are erected on site the the green gray one are the ones that are right now uh, in in the process and are about to be built so uh, you can already see some links to tractor culture uh, there's uh, a biogas plant a uh, fairly large one uh, which uh, can uh, both uh, it has two two separate lines uh, so it can uh, run separate, separately on the uh, manure from uh, conventional agriculture and on the manure from uh, organic farming it's the, the biogas plant is an individual company and that goes for all of these companies here. So GreenLab doesn't own any of these companies. We're just the hosts that are connecting the companies. Uh, the biogas plant is partly owned by a large uh, energy company, E.ON, and partly by um, a group of uh, local farmers in the area who uh, delivers the manure for, for the plant and also takes back the degas manure. Then we have uh, the local uh, Waste handling facility for the municipal, normally 4S. Uh, we have a Norwegian company, Quantafuel, who takes the waste plastic uh, in and turns it back into uh, an oil that goes into circular economy. It's a py pyrolysis process um, where they uh, uh, heat up the waste plastic um, without oxygen present and, and then they can turn it back into an oil that can be reused for plastic. Uh, we have uh, Steaksdale uh, with the SkyClean factory. Uh, it's a company also doing pyrolysis, but uh, doing it on uh, waste products from agriculture, either manure fibers or straw, um, that uh, through pyrolysis is turned into biochar that can go, go back into the field uh, for soil improvement, and, and a pyrolysis gas that uh, can be used for producing green fuels, like for example, jet fuels is one of the visions. We have a company called uh, the Starfish Factory. Actually, it's called the Danish Marine Protein, but uh, the nickname is the Starfish Factory because they take in an invasive species from the, the, the local waters. Starfish is, uh, is the nuisance for the mussel uh, fishing. So uh, it, it's uh, fished and uh, har harvested from the water uh, before the mussels mature. Uh, and uh, instead of just uh, treating it as a waste, the, the factory dries it up and use it or sell it for uh, protein powder for the local agriculture. So that's the, the companies that are present. And then you can see that we have some building sites where we are right now building, sorry, uh, power to X plants. Uh, two sites for uh, electrolysis hydrogen production. And uh, there's a site where we'll also do methanol production based on uh, the green hydrogen from uh, renewable energy sources and uh, the, a coupling with the CO2 waste from the biogas plant. A lot of what we're working with is, uh, as I said initially, the connections between the companies. Uh, this is a, a busy slide. I'll not go through all the details of it. Uh, it's just to, to uh, show you that um, what matters if we want to do a, a green transition for these industries is an understanding of where are the different value streams uh, and how can we make use of them? How can we make sure that, that uh, potential uh, values are not just wasted? Uh, a lot of... Uh, the green transition in, in our minds is about making sure that we don't have as much waste as is uh, currently the case in, uh, in industry. So on the left side, you can see um, how incoming sources, renewable energy, connections to the grids, and on the right side, a number of products that we can sell out from the park. And when I say we, it's not Green Lab, it's the companies being hosted in the park uh, that sells these products. So GreenLab is about generation of renewable energy. Um, we have uh, 
wind and solar connected directly to the park. Uh, we are also working with storage because one of the uh, challenges of working with renewable energy is, of course, the fluctuations of the availability, uh, which uh, can be difficult for factories to, to work with uh, when, when they, in principle, want to do 24 7 uh, operation. And then, as mentioned before, the sharing, the symbiosis between the industries in the park. Production of energy, conversion, storage, and then consumption in, um, in the individual companies. Going a bit into the living lab part, uh, we see Green Lab in Steve as uh, our pro prototype uh, test case of how to do industrial clusters. And we're working with a number of partners around the world who are uh, with us in the studies and uh, uh, having interest in how are we connecting the industries uh, in, in such a part. One example is um, uh, an interact project that we have been running with the uh, business park in Norway. Uh, the, uh, it's mentioned on the top of the slide, NES in Norway, Esfeld Business Park. We've just finished that project. Um, so, so they have been here studying what are we doing with the industries and we have been there, uh, vice versa. And that brings me to uh, the research part uh, of the talk, uh, which is the part I'm working with primarily. Um, from when, when we talk about research, one of our um, uh, reasons to work with academia is that we would like to catch new ideas from researchers and bring them into scale uh, in, in an industrial setting. <clears throat> and uh, just to set the frame of our research interests, uh, we work with what we call three different ways of uh, research. We work with them simultaneously, but they have different geographical extent. To the left side, uh, the first wave, we call that within the fence. So we work with researchers on how to optimize anything happening in Green Lab as a site. Uh, that means, for example, working with research projects on energy storage or on the connections, value creations uh, by connecting different industries uh, to each other. One example there could be the connections of uh, waste heat uh, between uh, a number of, of the companies being co-located in the, in the park. The next uh, part, the middle section, um, is research uh, about how to connect the cluster to the surroundings, is so having the cluster immersed in the local economy. In our case, uh, it's a farmland. So when we talk about regional integration, we are looking about research on connecting uh, farms around Green Lab to the Green Lab industrial cluster or vice versa. A um, simple example could be uh, uh, the transport of manure into Green Lab as a site, uh, so collection from various farms, but it could also go the other way. It could also be a hydrogen grid that goes from our uh, central industrial cluster out to the farms uh, to boost their bio uh, and the biogas production uh, decentrally, uh, for example, by by biomethanization processes. The third part of our research is about replication of the, our cluster. So looking at the various ways that the, we can learn about how to do a good uh, hosting of uh, industrial uh, factories and uh, to, to bring that learning into some kind of blueprint that we can replicate for, for new sites uh, later on. <clears throat> so uh, research missions, I'm not going to, to deep details about them because I, I know we are also running late on time, um, but our main mission is uh, to be able to get uh, good design principles of how to do eco-industrial clusters. Uh, and then under that work with the, how to operate a cluster between renewable energy fluctuations, uh, flexibility among the industries and the, the needed investments in uh, storage and conversion technologies. 
And then, of course, uh, working with the sector coupling and demonstrating how to get value out of the coupling the different sectors. The, la the last thing I will show is uh, a few examples on how we bring such research into practice with academia. We call it the mission-driven research uh, because these overall uh, mission statements on, on research is probably something everybody cannot do and say this sounds reasonable. We take it a step further and say, okay, when we are on a journey towards these missions, how can uh, how can we work with it, and uh, what do we um, what stops us? Uh, you could say. Uh, so from time to time, we encounter roadblocks, things that are difficult to solve, uh, and we pose these. Uh, problems as challenges and uh, bring them uh, forward to researchers in academia and ask them to uh, to co-create together with us. I'll give you uh, three examples of such uh, challenges uh, to, to let you get an idea about how we work with, with research in a living lab setting here in Green Lab. The first example, there's a lot of text. You don't have to read all of it. It's just to, to show you how, how we put up the challenges to, to the researchers and you can find uh, the same slides uh, online on, on our website later on if you want to look at them. First the challenge is about our role. So uh, we are actually asking researchers to um, to look uh, from the outside on the way we do uh, our role of cluster management and uh, play the role of value mediator among these different stakeholders in the cluster. There's been a, a number of research uh, reports uh, around the world on how to do industrial symbiosis and clusters. Uh, and we would like to learn from uh, academia there and make sure that we are not just doing the same mistakes as the uh, other uh, cluster facilitators might have done previously. So that's one way of uh, uh, working in a living lab setting with academia. Another um, challenge that we have posted uh, is called green versus cost. Because we ask uh, academia uh, or academic researchers to help us find out uh, what is uh, the spectrum of opportunities when you work with the companies in a park uh, that could uh, have different profiles. Some companies might want to be as green as possible. Other companies might want to be as profit driven as possible. Uh, but probably most companies will be somewhere in between. And we need to put some numbers in that uh, to be able to uh, to control the economy of the of the cluster. And finally, a, a completely different challenge is about um, how to make good design of the grid that we are building among the companies. We are uh, distributing electricity to all of the, the factories and to the upcoming uh, power to x facilities. And uh, we have an idea that we would like that uh, a distribution grid to be uh, future-proof, to be um, good uh, with respect to flexibility and some offerings uh, towards the external grid, uh, and at the same time be an interesting site for researchers to engage in. Uh, so uh, at this stage, where it hasn't been built yet, the, the grid, we are asking researchers to co-create and to come up with the ideas and suggestions of how sh should the topology be, what kind of measurement tools, uh, sensors, etc., are needed to make such a distribution grid an uh, interesting playground uh, for future research projects. And then uh, finally, we are uh, each time also posting open challenges and ask researchers to bring in their ideas about what makes the Green Lab an interesting place to, to do research projects. Final slide from my side um, is uh, an overview that gives you an idea about how we are engaging in uh, an ecosystem of uh, different research projects with different universities. Um, and, and uh, you can see there's already many projects and uh, quite a large complexity of uh, stakeholders. The green ones are the academic institutions uh, and the black ones are various uh, industrial stakeholders also participating in the research projects that are uh, being uh, uh, run here at 
the site. So that's it uh, from my side. I hope that uh, gave some inspiration about how you can work uh, in an industrial setting related to agriculture uh, with a living lab thoughts. Okay, <clears throat> thank you, Webby. And again, I think.